Hello everybody, my name is Wilder, and it's no secret that I'm hyped for Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town. I mean, the videos on my channel prove that. However, there's another Story of Seasons game that came out recently that I have paid almost no attention to at all, and that is Doraemon Story of Seasons. Now this is a crossover with, obviously, Doraemon. We've known about this game for a while now, but I haven't paid attention to it for a few reasons. The biggest one being that I don't know anything about Doraemon. Like, no joke, I, I don't know anything. I didn't even know he was a cat? I mean, I learned that from this demo. I mean, can you blame me on that one though? So I did plan on skipping this game, but there was a demo for it released on the Switch. I decided to try it out, and after playing it, I wanted to give you my first impressions on the game. So let's get into it. Now in this game, you play as a kid named Nobi. You, Doraemon, and the rest of your friends get sent to a whole other world by some freak accident. When you arrive, you realize that Doraemon has lost all his gadgets that would have helped you return home. The group comes across a town where they decide to stay at while they look for a way home. Now, because you're staying here for the time being, everyone decides to take on different jobs to help out around the town, and Nobi is gifted a neglected farm to work with. Now, right off the bat, this game already seems more story-based, or cutscene-based, if you will, than other Story of Seasons games. Even in this demo, I was triggering cutscenes left and right. I was having character interactions left and right. Now this is not a bad thing. The main reason it isn't a bad thing is because these characters are all really likable, and their interactions are honestly pretty wholesome. If I had to describe this game, then I would definitely use the word wholesome. The game's main theme is friendship, and even though that's one of the main themes throughout the entire Story of Seasons series, it's focused on a lot more in this specific game. The fact that the game is working with characters that already have a history with each other, and that already have a history in general, really, really works for its cutscenes, interactions, and themes. It really does this game a lot of favors. But enough about that, let's get into gameplay. Now this is a Story of Seasons game, so of course you're going to be taking care of a farm, planting crops, feeding animals, you know, all that good stuff that we're here for. So far, it feels like farming has been brought back to its basic form for this game. You know, they didn't try to add anything crazy or too new to spice things up, and I'm really glad that they didn't. Other Story of Seasons games in the past have tried adding new things to really mix it up and make farming feel fresh, but more often than not, it just ends up feeling cluttered, and like there's too much going on at one time on your farm. It can be really suffocating in some games. This game does not seem to do that at all. It knows how you like to farm, and it really makes it feel like the old Harvest Moon games that a lot of us grew up with. Nothing fancy, just good old-fashioned farming. Also, because this game is very story and cutscene based, it makes sense for farming to be basic, so that you have a lot of time to go around town and trigger cutscenes and progress in the story. It really works for this game. It reminds me of the old Harvest Moon games, and I love that. Now there's really no need for me to go over the controls too much. The game controls well, and it plays like a Story of Seasons game. However, I would like to talk about Doraemon's gadgets. Now the story said he lost his gadgets while you were all being sent to this other world. One of your main goals in this game is to find them all so that you can get home. So far, from what I can tell, the further you get in-game, the more things you do for the townsfolk, the more gadgets you'll find and unlock. You start off this demo with a single gadget, however, which is called the Anywhere Door. This door lets you teleport from your farm to any other main area on the map and back again. This gadget is extremely useful, especially if your bag is full and you need to drop some stuff off, or if you need to get to a shop quickly before it closes. It's a very cool idea, and it makes me excited to see the rest of the gadgets in the game. When I first saw the door and learned how it worked, I didn't think I was going to be a fan of it. I thought that it was going to feel really out of place in this type of game, but it actually ended up blending in really nicely. The gadgets seem to blend in nicely with how this game actually plays, so I'm really excited to see what else Doraemon's got up those sleeves of his. The biggest reason as to why this gadget is so useful is because the game's map is huge. It's kind of ridiculous how big this map is. Like, it's going to take me a bit of time to get used to it and learn all the areas, which is why the door is so helpful. Now, some Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons games in the past have tried to have really big maps, but kind of failed at it due to not having enough interesting things on the map, some areas being really empty, not having a lot to do. But in this game, the map being huge is actually a plus, and the main reason as to why is my next point. Something I haven't talked about yet, but was the first thing I noticed about this game overall, is that it is absolutely beautiful. Every area is so picturesque, and the white border around the screen as you play really makes it feel like you're in a storybook. Even when you're just standing on your farm in the nice green grass with the cherry blossom tree petals falling across the screen. Like, this game looks amazing, I can't believe it. Even though I kind of slept on this game, and didn't really pay attention to it, I still noticed how pretty the game was in all the screenshots I came across. 
This game looks very different compared to the Friends of Mineral Town remake. And while I like both games, and how they both look, I would not mind at all if this series moved forward using Doraemon's style and look. I am just completely blown away by how pretty it is. The character models and their animations look good as well. There are a few animations that are a little weird, like when you get out of bed in the morning. It just kind of teleports you off the bed. But in regular conversation, the animations look good and they match the character as well. Speaking of the characters, their designs are also really, really good. I think they match the cute and wholesome feel that this game has. On the same note, the music is also something that matches the game incredibly well. If I'm being honest, like 100% honest, the music in this game is perfect. It is perfect for a Story of Seasons game. The music is relaxing and it really sets the tone for this game. I really can't wait to hear the rest of the soundtrack, because I know it's going to be just as amazing as the little bit that I've heard already. Now while this game has been a lot of fun, there are just a few problems that I do have that I'd like to touch on. Okay, but in all seriousness, I heard that in the main game you can actually turn this off in a menu. This does mean turning all voices off, which is an absolute shame, because even though this game isn't voiced in English, the voices do add a lot to the characters. I just don't understand the decision to make the main character say A all the time. Like, why? Oh, I don't get it. Now one of the other big reasons as to why I didn't pay much attention to this game is because one of my all-time favorite mechanics throughout this series is getting married and having kids. Two mechanics that, understandably, are not in this game. After playing the demo, I have to admit, these mechanics are not needed in this game. Not only would it just not work because of the characters, but the game is solid just the way it is, and it has so much to offer on its own aside from the traditional Story of Seasons mechanics. And because of that point alone, I know that the further I get into this game, the less I will be bothered about not being able to get married and have kids. This game has so much to offer on its own that it doesn't need to rely on the traditional mechanics. And I think that's great. I really do. So that's actually it for the problems I had with this game. And honestly, they aren't even really problems. I've just had a lot of fun with this game, and I think it's really good so far. Like I said, I wasn't paying attention to this game as we were getting all the information for it because of the Friends of Mineral Town hype and because I just didn't know who Doraemon was. But after playing this demo, I can tell you that that was clearly a mistake. 100%. This game is extremely fun. It's beautiful, the character interactions are wholesome, funny, the game is just cute in general, the cutscenes are entertaining. I think this is a perfect Story of Seasons game for the younger audience because of Doraemon and all the themes this game has. And I think that the older audience, like myself, will really appreciate how wholesome this game is, and will also appreciate the simplistic farming style that really makes you think of the old Harvest Moon games. This is a really, really good game so far, and I've only played the demo. I'm gonna have to go pick this game up now. I really do regret not following this game after it was announced, but I guess the bright side is that I don't have to wait for the game. Now that I know what it's actually like, and now that I'm interested in it, it's already out, so I can just go pick it up. But that's gonna be all from me today. Those are my first impressions. What do you think about this game? Have you played it? Have you played the demo? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Down in the description, there are links to my Patreon, my Discord, and my Twitter, so go check them out if you're interested. I want to give a huge thank you to all my wonderful patrons. Their names are down in the description as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one.